Hey Star Warriors, Stargeek here, and welcome to the 10,000 subscribers and 1 million channel views Q&A special, part 2. I had to edit almost every question to be a bit more broad in order to fit them all in. This also means that not every question ended up in the video, so if you feel like you were left out, please rewrite your question in the comment section and I'll reply with the best answer I can give. I want to thank you all again for all your great questions, so without further ado, let's hop right into it. What's your favorite TV show? I don't really have a favorite TV show since it changes so often. For a while I liked Lost, then I went through a short Doctor Who phase. Star Wars TV shows like Clone Wars and Droids are also up there, so I'd rather just leave it undecided. Who is the best Star Wars villain, and who's the worst? The best is definitely Darth Vader, and the worst is Newt Gunray, or Zero the Hutt if you count the cartoons. Will the general audience become bored or overwhelmed by Star Wars? I'm starting to worry a little bit. With three new movies, three or four new spin-offs, one new animated show, four new video games, 14 new books, four comic book series, a live action TV show, a Disney Parks adventure, and all of the other merchandise and YouTube channels similar to mine, Star Wars is getting extremely hyped up. I'm afraid that people are going to get bored with Star Wars after the non-stop excitement that will be going on for many more years now. I know that I won't ever have too much Star Wars, but I can see lots of people being overwhelmed from the extreme amounts of galactic fun. I know that it won't make Star Wars any less popular, but it might turn off a portion of the general audience. When something is hyped up too much, it can ruin the fun, so hopefully that never happens to this saga. If you could have one item from the Star Wars universe, what would it be? A droid of some kind, maybe an astromech or power droid. Have you ever thought about getting a set of wearable Stormtrooper armor? No, not really, but what I have thought about doing is making a wearable C-3PO costume, which is what I've actually been doing lately. If you haven't seen my mystery unboxing video, I suggest you go check it out. What background characters should be more focused on? I want to see more from characters like White Pointy Face or Hammerhead or Walrus Man or Yak Face and all those other creatively named characters. And, of course, Wilro Hood. When did you start YouTube? I started YouTube in 2011 on my alternate channel, KP Productions USA, but I created the Stargeek channel on March 15th, 2014. What languages can you speak? I can speak English and a little bit of Swedish. What are your favorite bands? I don't really have any favorite bands. I just like a few songs from random bands or artists here and there, but I've never been much of a music person in the first place. Will you ever do a crossover or collaboration video with another YouTuber? I hope to do something soon, but I won't make any promises. If you could meet one character from the Star Wars universe, who would it be? Definitely C-3PO. If you lived in the Star Wars universe, what would your job, class, and species be? If I just pick some random species in class, I'll say I'd be a... How about an Ithorian bounty hunter? Do you like the 2003 Clone Wars miniseries? I love that series. I saw it for the first time when I was about seven, and I loved it then, too. It really ties the connections between episodes two and three, and I think it's even better than the 2008 series by the same name. What video or series has been the most fun to work on so far? I love almost every video I post. If I wasn't at least happy with the work, I wouldn't upload it. But my favorite series to work on has to be a tie between the top 10 episodes and my very first series, Star Wars Factor Beam. My all-time favorite episode to work on was probably either my holiday special review or second teaser review. When is your birthday? February 19th. What character would you like to return in episode 7? Lando Calrissian is at the top of my list. I can't believe they didn't include him. Hopefully he'll end up in episode 8 or 9. Would you like a crossover between Star Trek and Star Wars? No. Not only do I not like Star Trek itself, but the time periods would be completely off. Star Wars being set in the past, and Star Trek being set in the future. What's your name? My name is Krister. You may think it's an odd name, but that would be because it's Swedish in origin. I got the name KP Productions from my initials. Should Boba Fett be in Episode 7? I'd rather not see him in the sequel trilogy, unless he kills Han Solo. But it would be interesting to include him in the Han Solo spin-off film, giving Han and Boba a background, making the connection in Episode 5 more personal. What would ruin The Force Awakens? Messing up the original characters. I think they'll do fine with their new cast, but when dealing with the old cast, I'm afraid they may handle them completely wrong. I have a feeling that Leia and Han somehow split up, R2 and 3PO were separated for a long time, and Luke just disappeared and became a hermit. And I don't really want to hear that Han Solo and Chewbacca were gone from the Falcon for a long period of time as well. Hopefully they got it right. What's your favorite food? 
I guess I like fruit, so watermelon or grapes are high up there on the list. Pasta is pretty good too, and there's a pizza place called Slices on Alki Beach in West Seattle that has some of the best pizza I have ever tasted, so that's gotta be one of my favorites. How do you feel about Rick McCallum's influence on Star Wars? Let's just say that I'm glad he's gone. How do you handle school, free time, and YouTube? Well, school comes first, then Stargeek, then free time. I also tend to multitask, which would have me editing or writing Stargeek scripts while catching up on Star Wars news or just talking to people. What's your opinion on the live action TV series that may come out on Netflix? It's cool that they have finally confirmed what they promised so long ago, but I'm worried that this show is going to have a very poor quality storyline, boring characters, and a bad production value. Hopefully they get it right, but I'm not going to get my hopes up. Should they make special edition versions with the prequels like they did with the originals? No, because all they could do is mess them up even more, just like they did with the OT. What do you think about the EU no longer being canon? I'm actually glad that EU content is not considered canon anymore. It gives the new writers and directors more freedom. It also takes a load off my back, because before the announcement, I may say something that hadn't been proven, like how Han Solo met Chewbacca, and then be corrected by an EU enthusiast who knows everything about every Star Wars topic ever. I just don't have time to play all the video games or read all of the books, so I'm glad the days of, you're not a real fan if you don't consider the EU canon are over. Plus, fans can make their own canon, have fun with their own ideas of how the Star Wars universe unfolded. I consider Star Wars droids and Ewoks to be canon, as well as the Marvel comic books. It's all up to your own interpretation. What's the most underrated part of Star Wars? Ewan McGregor's acting. People throw him in there with the terrible prequel actors, but I think he played the perfect Obi-Wan Kenobi, especially in Episode 3, and he deserves more credit. In fact, he recently tweeted that he'd be happy to play Obi-Wan once again in a spin-off film if he was given the opportunity, which is pretty exciting. How often do you re-watch the Star Wars movies, and in what order should they be viewed? I must watch at least one Star Wars movie once every other month, and I'm almost constantly watching clips and segments while editing videos. The best order to watch the films is definitely the release order. No question. That means episode 4, 5, 6, one, two, and then three. No other order can beat that. Who has the best lightsaber? Obi-Wan Kenobi definitely has the best lightsaber hilt. How tall are you? About five foot nine or ten, so not super tall. About the height of Anthony Daniels, actually, which pretty much makes me perfect for a C-3PO costume. How many times are you going to watch episode seven? I'm going to answer your question with a counter question. How many days are there in a year? Because that's how often I'll have to see this movie. Non-stop. And I, I do know how many days there are in a year. That was just kind of like a, a little clever way of saying how many times. I, you know what I mean. Which version of General Grievous is the best? Out of his three appearances, them being Revenge of the Sith, The Clone Wars, and Clone Wars, he was definitely the best during his Clone Wars stage. He was mysterious, villainous, and extremely cool. His voice was awesome, and he pulled off some of the best things a Star Wars villain had ever done. I'd say that the film version was then his second best appearance, with the Clone Wars coming in last. A villain can't be cool when he runs away in literally every episode he's featured in. Do you own the theatrical versions of the original Star Wars trilogy? Yes, I have them both on VHS and DVD. They were released as a bonus disc in certain box sets, and they're definitely worth hunting down if you don't have them already. Who's the coolest looking Star Wars character? Well, how could I choose anyone other than Darth Vader? But C-3PO and R2-D2 are pretty high up there as well. What's the worst thing about the original trilogy? The ending of Return of the Jedi. It was too happy and similar to A New Hope. I'm not saying that making a happy ending is a bad thing. In fact, at the time, that was part of the charm. Gary Kurtz, the producer of Star Wars, and George Lucas started to part ways around the time of Empire because George Lucas wanted a happy end to the story, while Kurtz was hoping for a bittersweet and poignant end to the trilogy. Han Solo would die, setting the high stakes for the rest of the gang. The whole movie would end with Leia struggling with the duties of Queen, and Luke sadly walking off into the sunset. But George Lucas was more interested in selling toys, so the whole idea was scrapped. What's your favorite Star Wars song? I have a full video on this topic, but my all-time favorite score is Yoda and the Force. What was your first experience watching the prequels like? I don't actually remember my first experience very much, so I have no comment. 
Have you ever heard of the despecialized editions of the original trilogy? Yes, they're a great way to watch, no, the best way to watch the theatrical versions of the films in HD. If you lived on a Star Wars planet, which one would it be? The only planet I would ever want to live on would be Alderaan. That is, pre-Zero BBY. It's not only beautiful, but also very safe, uh, again, pre-Zero BBY, and comfortable to live in. Another option would be Corellia. It's the planet that I have as my desktop photo, and home to the heroic smuggler, Han Solo. Do you like sand? I don't like sand. It's coarse, rough, and irritating, and it gets everywhere. Who should die in the sequel trilogy? Han Solo needs to die. I suppose that Luke could also be the one to sacrifice himself, the same way Obi-Wan did, but I've always felt like Han should be the one to go. I have a full video on the topic. Which franchise should Hollywood stop rebooting? All of them. What type of Star Wars fan is the best? The type of fan who likes all the movies. The reason I say this is because they are generally, generally, more accepting of everyone's opinions. Everyone has the right to their own opinions, so I'm not saying that a certain type of people is better than another type. And while I tend to agree with original trilogy fanboys more, I have gotten so much more hate from them than from a prequel-only fan. People who like all films are at the very least able to understand both viewpoints. So really, no one is better. Everyone has their own opinion, and that's how it should be. Do you play any sports? And which is your favorite? I don't play any team sports, but if I had to choose, my favorite would probably have to be soccer considering I live in a big time soccer family. I do love to ski however, and sometimes kayak and bike. Where can I send you fan mail? I'm trying to get a P.O. box so that you can send me fan mail if you want to, but at the moment I'm still working on it. What's the best blaster? Han Solo's DL-44 blaster pistol. Do you prefer the Jawas or the Tusken Raiders? I've always preferred the tiny little droid thieves to the murderous monsters. How many conventions have you gone to, and what were some of your favorite moments? Only two. I went to the Emerald City Comic Con earlier this year, and then went to Star Wars Celebration Anaheim after that. Both experiences were amazing. My favorite moments have to be seeing The Force Awakens props, getting Anthony Daniels' signature, Anthony Daniels recognizing me at his panel talk, and meeting a bunch of Star Wars fans. Which film is darker, episode 3 or episode 5? In the past I've said that The Empire Strikes Back is the darkest film in the saga, but in reality, Revenge of the Sith has a much darker theme, getting a PG-13 rating. Who's your favorite Jedi? This may sound a bit contradictory, but my favorite Jedi is Luke Skywalker. I like Yoda and Obi-Wan better, as seen in my top 50 OT characters list, but I think Luke is the best Jedi. I have a full video on this topic as well. What do you think of the new Korean trailer and Instagram mini teaser? I thought that the shot was kinda cool. It definitely expands on what we saw of Starkiller Base and shows us the brand new type of walker. I'm also super excited about the new Instagram mini teaser and the two new league characters, Sarko and PZ4CO. What do you think of Kylo Ren's lightsaber? I'm definitely not a fan, but it's grown on me over time. What's your favorite class of fighter? X-Wings are definitely the best class of letter fighters, followed by Y-Wings, then B-Wings, and finally A-Wings. What do you think of the new release of the Star Wars Saga in the Blu-ray Steelbook Edition? I think that they need to get back to working on giving us the theatrical versions of the films on Blu-ray instead of already released content, but that's just me. What's the best LEGO Star Wars set? Definitely the LEGO Death Star set from 2008. How do you get subscribers, and what does someone have to do to grow on YouTube? I'm not exactly sure. I always try to upload good quality videos, at least the best I can. I also try to interact with followers. What I would say is that you should do whatever you enjoy doing, and only upload videos that you like yourself. On the technical standpoint, you should have a good microphone, creative and clear thumbnails, annotations, and a good editing software. You should get pretty far. That is, as long as you're not a gaming channel. There are so many gaming channels online that after two years of work, you might end up with a little less than 100 subscribers. But as long as you do what you love, you should start to see people hitting that subscribe button. What were your motivations and inspirations to start YouTube? I started out on YouTube in 2011 when I uploaded a LEGO stop-motion animation video to my channel, KP Productions USA. 
It's called Vader's Mail, where Darth Vader comes home to learn that the bills to the Death Star were never paid. My channel then became the home to hundreds of Minecraft videos. I wanted to make Minecraft videos after becoming not only obsessed with the game, but also after becoming obsessed with the YouTube series Survive and Thrive by Paul Sores Jr. I did that for a couple years until 2014, when I decided that I wanted to mix things up and make another channel. I wasn't expecting it to become anything at all, really. I only had around 70 subscribers on my main channel and never expected to grow much bigger, so I just wanted to make a Star Wars channel on the side. I ended up calling it Star Geek after thinking of many other crazy names such as Wars Geek, Star Warrior, and 3PO Fan. I actually have a video on the KPP channel talking about how I would gladly stop making videos for Star Geek for the sake of the KP people. Keep in mind that this is when I only had 6 subscribers on Star Geek, so I actually ended up doing the exact opposite of what I claim in the video. It was months before I got many views or subscribers, and as the channel got bigger and bigger, I was caught by surprise. The sudden growth was mind-blowing, and I can't thank you all enough for the support. So that's pretty much how I got started on YouTube. It's not exactly the most exciting story, but I thought I should explain this in depth before we got on to our last question. What's your favorite Star Wars memory? Other than meeting some of the Star Wars legends or seeing the films for the first time, I'd have to say that my favorite memory is all the fun I've had building up this YouTube channel, and I can't thank you all enough for your support, getting us over 11,000 subscribers. That's gonna wrap up this very special Q&A. Thank you all so much for the fantastic questions. Subscribe to StarGeek for weekly Star Wars content. If you like the channel, please tell a friend. If you enjoyed the video, please shoot that like button at light speed. You can go check out my Facebook page linked in the description. Also check out my Twitter account, at StarGeekYT, and find me on Instagram by the same handle. Click on the link to the left for my last video, Factor Beam Episode 17 on Darth Maul. You can also click on the right to watch the first part of this Q&A. Don't forget to like the video, and comment on your own video suggestions below the video. Until we meet again in a galaxy far, far away, this has been StarGeek. For those of you who don't know, I'll be going to Force Friday tonight, September 3rd. I'll be joining other Star Wars fans and collectors in line at the South Center Toys R Us and Target in Tequila, Washington until midnight of Friday morning to have the first opportunity to get the Force Awakens toys and merchandise. Who knows, if you're a Seattle area channel subscriber who's participating in Force Friday, perhaps I'll see you there. I'll be wearing a Star Geek t-shirt. I might upload a video about the experience. I just hope that I won't get trampled on the way into the stores. Oh boy, here it goes. Horse Friday. Oh god, here it goes. Hey, come. Hey, come. Hey. Oh, excuse me. Hey. No. Ow. Oh, no. Please. Star Wars. No. Please. Star Wars.